So kind of the whole myth that we don't make any money, that we, our pay is low, and that you're better off going to work for the private sector. And a personal story on that note that I've been kind of telling all day is that when I started, you know, again, I was kind of thinking I'd go to Charlotte, work for a bank, and some of the other offers I had were definitely higher salary than the job I ended up taking at GSA. And a lot of my friends were making more money than me when we started. And living in DC is not very cheap. So definitely at first I had to weigh my options. But I can tell you that now, six years, you know, working in the federal government, I'm actually making more than most of my friends in DC. And we'll kind of go through that. So federal salaries are on what's called the general um, schedule or the GS scale, and it ranges from 1 to 15. It's a public knowledge scale. You can Google GS salary scale, and every year it'll pop up, and it's you know based on your city. It's based on geographic location. Um, every one of those grades has 10 steps. So it's kind of a little bit overwhelming looking at this chart and figuring out where you would be. But for the most part, if you start off with just a bachelor's degree, you're going to come in as a 5 or a 7. It's based on your GPA being over a 3.0. If you're over a 3.0, you'll start as a GS7. And then if you have a master's, you'll start as a GS9. So basically, those are the kind of positions based on your skill set and your grade level that you want to start to go after when you're looking at jobs online, just to give you a little bit of background. And so this is kind of a glance at the scale from 2010 salaries. And actually, the 2011 scale is exactly the same, because if you have been reading anything about um, in Congress, basically, we are on actually a salary freeze. So this, this scale has frozen. It used to change a little bit every year, naturally, for inflation. And now it's kind of stuck um, for until two, 2013. So basically, you can see in DC, like if you start off as a GS5, 34. And with getting um, an increase to a GS7, you'll be at 42. So basically, in two to three years, you can progress rather fast. And most of the programs, like the one I described I came into, is what most people entry level or right out of their master's or um, advanced degree come in as. So you're going to come in as a 7 or a 9 and immediately within a year get promoted to um, from a 9 to an 11, from an 11 to a 12. So I started as a GS9 and then immediately a year later was um, promoted to an 11 and then immediately a year later promoted to a 12. So I jumped roughly $20,000 in my first two years. Um, I think that's pretty huge. I don't think we're seeing a lot of that in the private sector. So although I might have started off a little bit lower, I was definitely able to catch up to my friends within a year or two easily. Um, and basically, most programs, like I said, they are on what's called a career ladder, where when you see something written as a 7-9-11 online, that's basically saying that after one year, as long as you've successfully completed what's required of you at work, you will automatically get a promotion up into the 12 or 13, depending on what job position you apply for. And again, you can get online and Google the GS scale and see specifically um, this Kansas City, Missouri area's um, salary. So some extra benefits. I mean, obviously, you're going to get paid a salary every day, but there's a bunch of extra things. And I, know, I heard somebody say kind of that we have a strict schedule, so I will get into that with the flexible schedules. Um, student loan repayment. Um, there are agencies out there that are repaying up to $10,000 of people's student loans. Um, the stat, again, in 2009, 36 agencies provided uh, you know, over 8,000 employees with $61.8 million in assistance. So that's huge. Um, flexible schedules. Um, we do work um, 40 hours a week. It's pretty much on the dot, because if you're working over 40 hours, you get paid overtime. So that's pretty, that's pretty nice. 40 hours a week is not too bad. I had a lot of friends after school working 50 or 60 hour weeks, and I pretty much went in 7, left at 4.30 every day. It was pretty nice. Um, and with that comes flexible schedules. Most agencies um, end up allowing you to do what's called flex time. And I'm on what's called an alternate work schedule. So basically, I work um, 80, hours a, you know, 80 hours every two weeks, but I do it in um, nine days. So I get a day off every two weeks. I choose to take Fridays off. For me, it was huge when I graduated from school because I wanted to go to the football games every weekend. So I would leave on a Thursday night and have a three-day weekend. Um, you tie a, a free day off into a holiday weekend, you have a four-day weekend. And that's even before your leave that you're already given as well. And our leave is kind of a little bit different in the federal government. We have annual leave, and then we have sick leave for like doctor's appointments and what other. And we accrue those hours. Um, and as you stay in the federal government longer, you accrue more hours. Um, I'm actually at the point now where I've worked for the gov federal government for six um, years, and I accrue six hours of annual leave of pay period. So every two weeks, I'm accruing six hours. And basically, every year, I have to take off 
so many weeks of leave. Like I have to take off three weeks of leave every year or I end up losing that leave. So I think I'm now at a point where I really have a really generous vacation package. Training and professional development. Um, I kind of already told you my story. I've gotten my MBA and it was funded by the federal government. And I also had that project management certification, which I was taking those classes while, you know, while at work. I went to um, training classes during the week, you know, one week, maybe every six months or so. And it was paid for, you know, by the federal government. Um, I know a lot of people that have gotten advanced degrees um, paid for by the federal government. So there's definitely great training opportunities. Some people are taking other certifications other than project management. That just happened to be the route I chose to go. Um, the competitive health and retirement benefits. A lot of people have always heard about that one. Um, basically, when I started um, working for the federal government, I was given kind of a package of about 12 to 15 different health plan options, which was huge because I got to kind of pick, based on my needs, what was going to work best for me. A lot of times you go work for a company and you immediately have one option and that's it. It's kind of, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield and you have no options. You actually have an option. And what's so great is actually every year, and actually we're in open season right now, it's around October to December, every year I can change the plan. If I tried Blue Cross this year and wasn't satisfied with it, next year I can try Aetna. So that's kind of a huge flexibility as well that every year we have the ability to change plans if we need to. Um, excellent advancement opportunities. Again with that, I mean, the career ladder was one way that for me I've had excellent advancement opportunities, but even more recently, like, the office that I just moved to, um, kind of a unique story with that is that I actually had gone on a detail there from my other office for three months. So I was able to leave my permanent job, go for three months to learn about marketing and kind of, you know, see that I was going to like this job and then eventually within a few months, you know, ended up applying for the position that I'm in now. And I've had other friends that have worked on really unique opportunities within GSA specifically. Um, there's, I had two really good friends that have worked on the presidential transition team. Um, GSA is in charge of that every time there's a new president that leaves and a new one comes in and they got to basically help like set up all the um, IT equipment and office space for Obama and so that was pretty cool. They got to meet him and wipe his desk off and get it all ready for him and there's just some really unique opportunities and that's just at GSA, those two examples I gave and every agency does something else unique.